Welcome to the car guys and this week a full 10,000 mile ownership update on my GR Yaris. What I love about it, what I hate about it, why it's such a special little beast and what I'm going to do with it next. And also in this episode, tragically, all the reasons why Jason is currently selling his, despite it being one of the first in the country. You and I will find out why the biggest advocate and early adopter of the GR Yaris has finally had enough and wants to get shot of it. Lots to discuss then and emotions are running high, so let's get on with it. I've now done just under 10,000 miles in this precious black little terrier and it's been all over the UK and in every conceivable driving condition. I've even taken it on a gravel rally stage where it emerged mercifully unscathed. I got this car on the 21st of September 2021 from Stephen Eagle Toyota in the magnificent county of Essex, a year after Jason's white one, which was one of the first in the country. And it's been my go-to daily runabout. A car I can just jump into without worrying whether it will start, everything connects, everything works, and I know I can make very rapid progress in any kind of weather. And I'll arrive most likely with a smile on my face. That's what the GR Yaris does, it delivers, and it's got a one-track mind for fun times. It cost £33,000 new, which is astonishing value for money when you consider its ability and performance, its pedigree, that it's hand-built and with the finest underpinnings, and that Toyota must have lost money with every single one that it built. Frankly, Toyota could have charged £40,000 and still sold all 25,000 of them. And in fact, in the early days, many car flippers tried to do just that. Nowadays, though, the mania has died down a bit, but what is incredible is that for all the reasons just outlined, prices have held up and you still need to pay on or around the new price for a used one. That may change now though because the unbelievably generous finance scheme offered to new owners, which saw a GR Yaris on the drive for just £300 a month, are now coming to an end and require a big final payment. So that might dump a load of GR Yaris's onto the market which might bring the prices down. Or maybe it won't. So let me tell you the story of my ownership of this car, what I like, what really annoys me, and then you'll also hear from Jason on why he's selling his. I like the fact that it looks like a squat, muscled hooligan. This is the only three-door Yaris, which makes it instantly recognisable, that and the fact that there are GR badges all over it. It's got a lower tapering roof line, 95mm lower than the standard car, which channels the air over the rally-like spoiler to generate downforce. The prominent rear diffuser is a clue that this is a rally monster loose on the roads. And just look at all those aggressive fins, grills and ducts. The front is dominated by that signature GR Matrix grille that feeds air into the radiator and intercooler and engine compartment. I really like how boxy and planted it looks from directly behind. It reminds me of a car I used to race in Rage Racer on the PlayStation. Really? really fast. The GR Yaris has an all-new 1.6-litre three-cylinder turbocharged engine that produces 257 brake horsepower and peak torque is 266 pounds-feet, which is 360 newton meters. It's the world's most powerful three-cylinder engine. Nord 60 comes in 5.5 seconds and it has a top speed of 143 miles an hour, but it's the surge from the turbos that really makes it feel even faster. It's the horsepower per ton figure that explains why the GR scampers off down the road like a whippet with a bum full of dynamite. It's 200 brake horsepower per ton. It weighs 1200 and 80 kilograms, and although that's positively lardy compared to 90s hot hatches, today the GI Yaris is considered a size zero. It was achieved through the use of aluminium body panels for the bonnet, tailgate and front doors, thin sheet steel for the wings, a fanatical dedication to weight saving throughout the car, and a forged, not woven, carbon roof, which also helps the centre of gravity. 
the way this thing gets around corners is frankly spooky because it's light, because it's sucked down to the ground, because of its suspension setup and rally experience. Well, who can put this better than I can? Man, this baby must corner like it's on rails. But the real reason is Toyota's new GR4 permanent electronically controlled all-wheel drive system, which has three driving modes that change the way the car behaves and gives you three distinct flavors to play with. Normal, front wheel bias, sport, rear wheel bias, and track, all wheels. That means it's sure-footed in all weather and road conditions, and it gives you incredible confidence. Even though it's a homologated rally car for the road, it's still a Toyota Yaris. So it's well built, ergonomic, well thought out and reliable. The buttons will still work in years to come. And in this circuit pack equipped car, you get a large color touch screen, which is easy to use and has Apple CarPlay as standard. And that never ever fails to connect. Unlike, for example, a Mercedes S600 Maybach. It's like the shuttle of the USS Enterprise. It will always get you home. When you've got as many two-seater sports cars as I have, it's always advisable to have modes of transport with a certain degree of practicality. The GR Yaris has 174 litre boot or trunk capacity, thanks to the ability to quickly and easily fold the rear seat backs forward to create a near flat loading area. Since I use this car for filming and for all manner of journeys, this is very useful indeed. And especially recently when I needed to replace one of the wheels on my Maybach and I needed a car that could fit a wheel in the back. One thing I do like though is having the boost gauge on in the dashboard and then flooring the throttle and watching it turn yellow. I love it. Feels like some kind of warp drive which really tickles the inner child in me. Yes, warp drive. But I do love the way it revs. It just keeps on revving and it is very, very happy to do so. Warp jump. <laughs> oh, that was a big twitch then. Just the speed that you can carry when you're going down these roads, it's unbelievable. What I really love is throwing it into a corner and then pressing the accelerator full on as you're deep into the apex and then just waiting for that surge to just pull you right back round and throw you out of the corner. It's just such a great feeling. Oh, look at, look at that. Just the G-forces. It's just remarkable that this little peppy pocket rocket is achieving all this. But that's enough about what's fantastic about this car. Let me tell you what I don't like. There are some things, don't think for a minute that this car is perfect. Oh no, there are many things that are actually pretty bloody annoying. You know the system where it thinks it can see a danger and then it actually slams the brakes on. Now, the one in this is very, very alert and if I'm being honest it cries wolf all the time. You could just be driving up to a car, it's parked on the side of the road and it goes beep, 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 and red light comes on the dash and it slams the brakes on, it's very unpleasant and you're nowhere near it. You're nowhere near an accident, you're nowhere near a thing that is going to poke out and hit you. That's really annoying. Oh here we go, I might have one here. And yet strangely there was a genuine obstruction in the road. Didn't spot it at all. What the hell is going on, Yaris? Now you might expect me to go on a huge rant about the high seating position and the fact that the mirror is quite low and the windscreen is a bit of a pillar box and therefore it creates a blind spot. But do you know what? I'm not, because to be honest, those things just do not bother me. I do not feel overly high in the car. I guess like rally drivers, it's nice to actually get a good view of the road. When you're in something as frisky as this, it's good to really be in that alert position. What I do massively mind is the ridiculous pantomime 
of the startup procedure because if you like to drive then you cannot stand to have interventions you have to press the gr button to start the car and then the first thing you have to do is press the start stop off because it's the most annoying thing in the world and then you've got to press the IMT which is the thing that makes the gear changes a lot smoother then of course you've got to hold down the white line encroachment device system button until it goes off then you have to press the back button here on the other side of the steering wheel to make all the infuriating alert messages disappear so before you've even set off you have to press one two buttons hold down another for a bit then press another and then you've got to twirl the knob in the middle of the dashboard to select what driving mode you're in five things five things to do before you even get the car started it's just so annoying but if i may offer a counter it also sort of feels like you're starting up a space shuttle or a boeing 747 you know there is a complicated startup procedure which i will admit is 30 percent quite cool indeed it has a very very small fuel tank you fill it up and it starts to go down and then all of a sudden it just absolutely empties and you're pretty much gone i thought initially it was because the turbo motor on song must be ridiculously inefficient or when you're really pressing on it must get terribly inefficient but according to the computer in here, I'm doing 35 miles to the gallon, so it doesn't seem to be that. It just seems to be a small tank, and that does mean a lot of fill-ups. A lot of fill-ups. And also, one of the things I don't like about this car is the noise. I want the incredible, blary, growly, beautiful rally homologated blistering growling noise to come out the back of the car and I want everyone else to hear it I don't want it to be synthesized and pumped through some speakers in the cabin yes it sounds quite good in here when you accelerate allow me to demonstrate here we go ready listen to this yes that sounds quite good however outside <coughs> almost nothing. I know that's got something probably to do with European rules and all sorts of laws and stuff, but I want this car to be heard. I want it to be a fire-breathing monster. I don't want it to be as quiet as a church mouse outside, whilst inside I'm just listening to the greatest hits of Toyota rallying. No. No, I don't want that. The steering is quite dead, it doesn't have any real feel about it whatsoever, which is a bit of a shame, but I suppose when you've got all-wheel drive that is something you're going to have. But probably one of my biggest criticisms of the GR Yaris is it is most definitely underbraked. It really, really, really needs far better brakes than the ones it's got. They do feel quite spongy, they do feel a bit insubstantial, they do not give a lot of confidence at all. When you've got a car capable of going this fast, you do want confidence in your brakes, that's for sure. But now let's check in with Jason and find out exactly why he's thinking about selling his car. What on earth is going on? Jason, over to you. So Jason, shock horror, you're thinking about selling your GR Yaris that we are in right now. This very car. This very car. Very car. I'm thinking, I am absolutely. Why in the name of all that's holy are you doing that? I'm going to give you an analogy. I do love an analogy. <laughs> do I not? So imagine walking into a swanky bar in that there London town and meeting Cindy Crawford. Okay. You should instantly fall in love with her because she's everything that you would ever want in a woman. And yet, apart from that mold maybe. Apart from the mold maybe, yeah. And yet, you buy her a drink, you're having a scintillating conversation, and then she sticks a finger up her nose, <laughs> pulls out a bogey and eats it. <laughs> and you're like, I should love everything about you, but somehow now I can't go there. And, and this car, I should love absolutely everything about it. It's rally bred, it's four-wheel drive, it's 
fast, it's all of the things that I should love. And yet, every time I drive it, I get out and go, ugh, it's very dull. Oh no, what has happened to you? I don't know, I just think it's not raw enough. Because you were the pioneer with this car. Oh, you God. were the one that told me about it. Yeah. You were the one that got excited about so it. So excited. Put your name down first before anyone else in the UK got the first one in the UK. Yeah. This car. This car. And yet it's not doing it for you. No. No. And, and, and to prove that, I've now had it for two and a half years, something like that. Maybe something a bit longer than that. And I've done 4,000 miles on it. Wow. And I've had mine a year less than you and I've done 10,000. Yeah, exactly. At nine or 10 tenths, this car is absolutely scintillating. I mean, I defy, and I know I'm gonna get absolutely pilloried in the comments for this, but I defy anybody to keep up with one of these that's well driven on a back B road in absolutely anything. Exactly. Because the thing is- It's impossible. To it's see. absolutely impossible. This thing is so fast point to point but that's part of the problem is it is so fast point to point that when you're doing this and we're doing you know we're on a 60 mile an hour road but we're only doing 40 because we're stuck behind one can only assume an old person out to get their pension can't you just overtake them though straight well, you away could, this minute right but, now but look just, just so yeah. i can't see around this there corner oh there's another corner that's a big enough game so uh, so yeah the young Jason would have had them in a second. Yeah, I oh, probably would have also been up on that grass verge there, yeah, avoiding the lorry. If something yeah. was coming the other way, you'd have gone up on the verge and then back down again. I am an old man now. Yeah, honestly, we are getting old. It doesn't make any noise at all. And I keep looking down going, I'm doing three and a half thousand RPM. I can't hear it. So it's essentially hand built. Mm. It's limited in number. It's exactly. the highest quality. It's rally bred. Yep. It's made by the absolute experts in rallying field from the finest materials and yet what you're saying is that is not enough. It's just a bit dull. Do you remember that hurricane that you had? Yes. The Performante that was frankly ridiculous. But I never looked back at it. Never. And that's exactly the same problem. I never missed it. I totally agree with you on the noise. I wish it was... I, I wish when you started it up from the outside it sounded like a Lancia Stratos. <laughs> That's what it looks like it should do. Yeah. And it should vibrate and rattle like a Metro 6R4. But, yeah. You know, it yeah, just absolutely. I, I think if it did that, I would be more into it. I actually thought that maybe what I should do... With oh, it, I know where you're going with this. I should take it out to Yorkshire. Yes. Right? And I should leave it at the Yorkshire house. Yes, exactly. And, just that, and be, that's the place where it lives. That's what you should do. That is the greatest maybe idea. Maybe I'll fill in, fall in love with it again. You will. You there. totally will. Because it's the perfect environment for that. This should be the official transport of the Car Guys Yorkshire HQ. <laughs> But Damien, how do I get it up there and get back again? And to which I say two words, road trip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do the road trip. Thank you for watching this update and episode on my GR Yaris, now that it's hit 10,000 miles, and also Jason's thoughts on why he's gonna be selling his. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you found it useful and entertaining. And if you like what we're doing on the car guys, Please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.